Well, I've been in the process of uh, making this for checking the alignment on the lathe, and it might be kind of hard to make out in the video, but basically it's just some the square tubing tacked together and that stuff. And and I realized after watching uh, Dale Derry, I already looked it up once. Um, he used a plate that was flat on the bottom, so it was a whole lot easier to put shim stock underneath to check it. So my bit with the uh, contact points with the angle iron and that stuff is kind of a uh, not as good as, not as easy as what he was showing, so that kind of thing. So, uh, so let me show you the other option. I, I spent, you know, three hours fabricating this so far, and then it's kind of like, dope! I could have done it in about ten minutes using this. You know, a lot of guys have these, uh, just an angle plate. Um, you know, it's for bolting stuff down to the mill table and stuff like that. So it's, it's at a nice right angle, it's good and solid, it's got a perfectly flat surface. But I could have just clamped, you know, bolted something vertical to this uh, with an arm over it in order to hold the, the plumb off. So then I was looking around for string and that stuff and I've had this hanging up, oh man, probably seven or eight years. <laughs> Quite a bit of dust on it. Uh, anyway, this is the string I'm going to use. I've never pulled it out to use the awl or anything, but it's about the only string I have in the shop, so... I figure that ought to be just about perfect. Uh, I can I can cut off the amount of string I want or need, uh, which I don't know yet. And that's about what I want right there. So let's. I'm just going to put a quick clamp on there. That doesn't work. I'll just tuck that up there. Okay. Uh, marker. So I wiped the bedways off yesterday. Can't get much closer than that because uh, of the chuck. And Dale said to mark lines so you can line it back up at the same spot on your plate. So I'll do that. And I highly recommend going and watching his because, uh, you know, this is how I'm doing it. I think his is, uh, he's got more explanation and stuff like that that uh, makes it even better. So, Okay, I've got the edge pointing straight down to the edge of the tape there. So I have that marking. Now I'm going to move it to the, uh, the end here. I'm going to pull this with, pull this forward a little bit here. Tired of listening to that hiss. Yes, I like where that's at. Okay, let's see if we can do this without messing it up. Now hopefully that angle's pretty good. It's it's a thirty second of an inch off. You know, this is the second position and you know, I looked at it again before, and that, that thing was right over the edge of the tape. I was real pleased with where it was. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shim stock here, and we'll see if we can get it even closer. So this is a 2000s brass shim stock. It's what I used uh, on, the, uh, on here, and I figured that works out good because it's big enough to uh, span both uh, things. So... So let's see how much that moves it. Oh, that's going to make it go farther away. And it did. Duh. So let's tilt it back a little bit. And let's look at the lines. Because I moved it all over the place. 
Okay. Yeah, that looks uh, that looks even closer. I'm gonna let it settle down here, and then I'll take another shot. Kind of hard to tell getting the right angle with the camera and everything. When you look down on it, it looks like it's splitting the uh, the edge of the tape. You know, it's wandering the same amount over and back. Uh, looking at it from the video camera, it doesn't quite appear to be doing that. But uh, that could be that I'm not at quite the correct angle. Yeah, that looks a little more accurate. Uh, so I like that. Now the question is how to get the, the lathe to match up. I'm guessing I'm going to come in here, loosen, loosen up the bolts or whatever, and try to get the shim stock in here. Um, I guess I could try to get it in here. So I think I'll go back and double check the, the left side here. What I did was the, the two bolts that are lined up this way, that bolt this block to the table, I got in through the drawer there and... Uh, Loosen them both up, pried the block up off the the drip pan, and I, I put in 3,000 shims uh, just because I, I already had them cut and everything like that. I figured, you know, we'll see how close they are. And you would think that with them being closer to the center, I kind of figured the drip tray would absorb some. Um, and I think I was right because that's exactly splitting the line there on the uh, edge of the tape. There's two screws that bolt these two together, and they go this way. They're pretty hard to get at, and uh, I kind of wanted to leave this set up where it was uh, while I changed it. So I took out the 2000 shim, you know, and then did that, and I cranked them both down. And they're both tightened down pretty evenly. You know, at one point I mentioned, you know, maybe I'll tighten up the back one and loosen up the front one. But I didn't want to have it loose and have cutting forces put any twist in there because it wasn't tight. I've got them both tightened down really good and tight, and that thing's exactly where I want it. So I'm going to put it over on this side and see if that's exactly where that one is. And if it is, then that's done. Then I can uh, start working on the other alignments, because I think the headstock may be out. But the thing is, is if you've got a twist in here, okay, because leveling the lathe, leveling it this way, bench-wise, you know, that's for drainage of coolant and stuff like that, you know. That's got to be fairly close. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. You know, from everything I've been reading and, and watching and stuff like that, um, you know, the closer it is, the better, the easier. But with this, you know, you're checking your level from one end, and I checked it here first because I don't really want to have to try to shim this end, okay? This end's anchored down. If anything, if there's going to be a twist in anything, it's over here because, you know, this is, this is the easiest point for it to twist. So getting... So when they, when they talk about leveling a lathe, it's twist in the bed, okay? It's not so much as it perfectly, you know, this way, that way. It's is there any twi twist? Is it exactly the same plane here as it is here? Uh, so let me go back and verify that, and we'll, we'll move on. I'm pretty pleased with where that's at. So if this end is still there, man, I'm happy. And I'm not positive again if I got exactly the right angle. Uh, but it's it's barely swinging. It's going back and forth. And, you know, when I lean right over it, look straight down on it, uh, it's splitting the difference. You know, it's swinging to both sides of that line. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's It was noticeably off before. Okay, these things are within a few thou now. I mean, if they're, if they're different, we're talking five or ten thou as opposed to... It was off a good 32nd of an inch, if not uh, 16th. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think I'm going to leave it. One quick note here. Um, there's no set distance for how tall this has to be. I gauged my height by what I could clear under the light on the other lathe. Okay. Um, but the longer this upright is, the more sensitive your measurement and the more accurate you're going to be able to get. Okay, so if you watch Dale Derry's, his is up out of the picture. You know, it's probably at least a good four feet long. So this, I think for what I'm doing and everything like that, I think this is uh, more accurate than it was. Certainly more accurate than using the digital level. That got me close. Um, and if I was really knew what I was doing or whatever, I guess, or if the lathe was a whole lot bigger, 
you know, I could put it in the middle and I could check it at different spots along the way. Um, I, I don't think that's really going to be necessary, this thing's so short, you know. Um, they've got lathes that are 20 feet long. That would definitely be a place to uh, worry about it. So I think that's it for this lathe, as far as the, the leveling goes. All right, let's try it again here on the other lathe. Oh, marker. Marker wet right here. All right, we're going to try it again on the other lathe here, and I'm going to mark my lines here. Okay. And it is swinging there, and like uh, Dale says in his, you could you could put the tape down and then and then draw a line. Uh, I'm gonna try to do the same thing I did on the other one here, same thing he did, which is just to get it to stop moving with the edge of the tape. Okay, I had to move the string because I had to move the clamp up top because uh, it hit the light. Uh, so it's actually sitting down a little closer to the uh, the table than before. Okay, I like that. It's splitting it evenly in the last little bit it's swinging. So let's move it to the tailstock and see if there's any twist. And I checked this one with the digital one years ago, uh, and that was the last time I checked it. Uh, according to some of these guys I'm watching, you know, they're talking about these these can settle over the years kind of things. So, of course, this is more accurate than what I was doing before anyway. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Alright, well this is the tailstock of the big lathe and the 13 by 40 and uh, you know I don't care if I'm on exactly the right angle or not you can see that that does not match. Uh, this is further out of alignment not surprising it's a lot longer machine uh, than the 9 by 20 uh, but now I get to figure out how to uh, shim this one. <laughs> Uh. Well, you know, once that the uh, once that settled down, I I didn't quite like where it was at. It was leaning forward a little too far. Okay. Uh and, you know, really only about maybe 10 thou, maybe. Um, so, maybe there is some more flex in this steel frame than uh, I thought there would be. Uh, I got down here and basically I jacked this corner up just a quarter of a turn. Because uh, I did a half a turn and uh, it went too far. So I put it back down a quarter and that is exactly where it was over here. Now I gotta go over here and check this end again. You know, because if that if that uh, frame is that rigid, you know, like a tripod, when I jack this corner up here, it's actually going to take some load off that front corner here, which means then the whole thing could twist back. So I have to check it back there, too. Man. Starting to understand why I didn't want to do this the first time. Of course, the real reason I didn't do it the first time is because I didn't, you know, didn't have any clue how. Uh, yeah, there's other 
methods, precision level and stuff like that, but when I saw this one from Dale Dairy, I was like, you know, that really looks pretty uh, uh, simple. You know, my level is simple. This thing will swing forever because uh, I walked away for half an hour and it was still moving back and forth slightly uh, when I did it earlier. Right on the money. Awesome. I probably could have saved myself a bunch of grief here with the, the shimming and everything had I just simply tried the feet to start with. Okay, that's kind of exciting. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, now, some may lab. I took this out. I haven't used it in all these years. I'll throw this in a drawer somewhere. But I left that hooked up and tied. That string is very nice. It's taut. It uh, doesn't stretch or, you know, boing. Uh, so I'm going to hang it back up on the wall like this. I, I tried to tuck it up in here and it wouldn't quite go, and then I'd never find that, you know what I mean? Uh, but I thought, well, if it's sitting like this, and, and I'll probably put it in the video just so that I can go, God, what did I do with that? Last time I used it was, <laughs> and that'll trigger my memory or whatever. So uh, uh, anyway, that's just, that's a Harbor Freight uh, deal, of course. So uh, I'll hang that back up, and then I've got my plumb bob already uh, set up with string on it for next time I want to use it. Not exactly sure why I'm... Uh, showing you this but uh, I try to use every bit of space I have in the shop and I didn't really have a place that I you know go store this I don't want to put it outside and get all rusty I'll never use it again I'll probably never use it again anyway but you know it can hang upside down on that shelf uh, right there move it easily out of the way uh, it can probably stay there for years and never move 